Burbank taking on a project like the Target Zero Waste Home, we're looking to achieve a number of different uh, objectives. Certainly key was challenging our processes, where do we stand in best practice or good practice. More than that is, well, how can we then learn from it and then share that with industry? We brainstormed initially of what could we do, Burbank as an organisation, HIA as an industry association, um, how can we come together and really do something that was a little bit unique, a little bit different and certainly benefited the industry overall. The project was split up under a number of different phases. The first stage of the project was all about understanding construction impacts for a typical residential house in Australia. During that initial phase of the project, we helped establish a waste audit protocol. We went out to the initial project site a number of times to really have a look to see what sort of waste was generated. Importantly, what we found though is that the drivers for those uh, waste types were really to do with over delivery and over supply, but also off cuts. The average house in Australia has about 17 cubic metres of waste on average. And when we scale that up, talking nearly uh, 2.5 million cubic metres of waste every year generated from building new houses. It's probably about the equivalent of a thousand Olympic sized swimming pools. The Burbank house that was audited. Um, had about nine tonnes of uh, waste and um, what we found is that about 50% of the waste was uh, were due to bricks and about 25% of the waste from roof tiles. Really when we're talking about eliminating waste we try and refer to the hierarchy of control. The first is to avoid the waste in the first place, reduce the amount of waste. If you can't do that then are there ways to reuse and then recycle. We were able to work with the design team at Burbank to really find ways of eliminating the waste in a way that was commercially acceptable. Well, once we completed construction of that baseline home, we then moved into phase two. Phase two was really about gathering that data, analysing it, looking at what are the opportunities that we can actually draw from. We pulled the, I suppose, our, our teams together. So the design team came together, construction came together, sustainability, Victoria came along to, to the meeting as well, and with RMIT as the facilitators of, of that workshop. So we set some parameters, had to be affordable, had to be appealing, had to be accepted by the market today. And certainly we saw that it was valuable that we used the materials we currently use because we can't see that changing over the next five to 10 years. One of the things that we focused on was really trying to eliminate the big ticket items that were causing a lot of the waste. So be it the, the bricks and the, the roof tile waste, for instance. These were really taking up the majority of the mass and the volume being generated we really put a lot of effort in focusing on those rather than the smaller things like the cardboard waste and maybe a little bit of plastic. We were coming up with different ideas amongst the teams from RMIT and Burbank that were sometimes a little bit confronting and challenging. And Burbank were really quite good in recognising that perhaps there's a new way of, of doing things and a, a different approach. Main involvement was just looking at um, various solutions. We actually started with a complete redesign where we designed the whole facade of the house uh, differently. We used different materials, we explored uh, panel claddings, um, different sheet claddings, and we, we really just ran through all these options and then analysed what sort of waste was coming out of it. We could do a house where we, we got a completely prefabricated system off the shelf and put it together and all the waste was in a factory. That was sort of one, I guess, almost innovative way that we could have done it, but we thought in the end the impact to the industry would be limited. So we thought, well, let's steer away from the more non-conventional ideas and try to stick with you know, your bricks and mortar construction to try to get those changes within the industry happening. Even though we did go down a design path and we explored all these aspects, the end solution ended up being quite simple and almost like a, just being wary when you select your materials and specify things that you, you are considering those waste aspects. Some of those things, for instance, was the bricks and the roof tiles. Both of those added up to about half of that waste, so about four and a half tonnes. After those two big aspects of the bricks and the roof tiles, reducing the waste in there, we started looking at all the other 
smaller elements. We looked at the tiles and how to, you know, what sort of tiles we selected was important. Just by selecting a square tile with a, a you know, a uniform pattern that you could use in any direction meant that you could use that tile in, um, in various orientations. So again, you reduce that waste. And it's looking at that principle in every phase of the build. What are our needs? What are requirements? Let's eliminate the over-ordering. Let's just estimate to what's required then work with our suppliers to make sure that's all we receive. That's really important. Phase three is about, well, let's test it. Let's put it into practice. So we'll build the same home using selected materials that we've agreed to in, in the workshops. The design stays the same and we're going to re-measure that and see what sort of waste reduction we've been able to achieve and as, that's from the design aspects of the avoidance. What opportunities we had to reuse and, then, uh, and, and reduce for, for that matter and then whatever's left over in the recycle pile, make sure that none of that goes to land, landfill. Certainly across the two projects, the Phase 1 and the Phase 3 are identical in a, in a sense, where we've set up a, um, a, a diary where everything's measured, so it's separated into their streams. That is uh, again audited by RMIT, and what we're looking for is that reduction initially, and then what happens to that waste. Were they the same reasons as Phase 1, any different reasons that, that, that we can identify? And then what happens to that? Where does it go? Again, avoiding landfill. So we go out on site, myself and my team go out there and, and just see what's worked, what hasn't worked, um, you know, what hasn't gone right in the ordering process or the, the actual assembly process and just see whether we need to change it to get back to that zero waste. The target zero house that we built at Atherston was uh, Tierra and the reason we chose that Tierra was because it was another client's job in the Melton area. So we wanted to have the exactly the same house built twice, one using our standard build processes and the next one using the target zero waste principles. In doing that, just through some clever material selections and some different processes, we ended up getting to that target zero goal on that Tierra. What we've seen in the, the new home, the, the zero waste home that Burbank is building, is that some of these strategies uh, that we've come up with are actually really working. For example, uh, Burbank have nearly eliminated the waste that's been caused by excess waffle pods. And another example would be the amount of waste that was being generated from used bracing timber. One of the other aspects that's really critical here is that some of the strategies showing some benefits in terms of labour costs. We'll be working with um, Burbank and the HIA to really broadcast some of the really important findings and messages that were coming out from this study. Now part of the reason for that is, is that we're going to be incorporating a lot of the findings and learnings from this study into learning curricula for undergraduate and postgraduate courses in the future. As we're coming to the final stages of the Target Zero Waste to Landfill project, we've exceeded our initial expectations of 85% avoidance to landfill. And probably the most exciting part about that is, for the most part, they're achievable and they're doable right now. So we're getting really excited about sharing these learnings with the, with the industry, because we can have some wins very much in the short term. Uh, and it's about now getting everybody on board.